it's funny though, like Bradshaw, if you ever watched him and Ron Simmons against, let's say, uh, Credible and uh, PJ's and Buddy, so he always jokes around with me about like him, uh, JBL and, and Ron Simmons used to beat the hell out of him and X-Pac. And then if you look at the matches with like Public Enemy, I mean, it's not like, I don't think they were singling you out. I think they just stiffed the shit out of everybody. <laughs> well, that Public Enemy thing was... Well, pretty- there's more to it than that. Yeah, but yeah. That was pretty on purpose. I was there for that one. And- yeah. They cut. They tried to finish. Well, I was just saying, you're not the only one that that he, that he yeah. may have yeah. beat the crap out of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of house show matches where I was like, Jesus Christ! I thought the house show matches were were supposed to, you know, take it easy on the house shows. You know, TV, you want to kind of lay it in because right. cameras are right there. You know, you, you can't have you can't have too much daylight. You know, with those cameras, you know, right there. You know, all right, lay in a little bit. House show loop. I'm like, gee, oh. I owe you money. What the fuck? You know, just, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, look, there's other people who have, there's other people who have issues with John. My thoughts on JBL. Um, he's a bully, you know, I, I think he's a really big bully. I think, uh, in the back in the day, he's what the problem was in pro wrestling. You know, guys like him were, were a problem. He was a bully. He would, uh, he would say things uh, and do things that are you couldn't get away with today. He's just, he's just a mean-spirited dude. And, uh, you know, that's all I could say. He's just not a, good, not a good person. There's a few fans on here that want to know if JBL ever tried to bully you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, big time. And coincidentally, we're talking about the tribute to the troop shows. So I was, my first year going there, we went to Afghanistan and they put us into different groups, you know, like the, whoever they decides going on the group goes. And then the whole group is separated into like three or four different groups. So in my group, I had Mick Foley, Trish Stratus, Carlito, JBL, and there might be somebody, oh, like Fit Finley was with us. And uh, man, JBL just tortured me the whole trip. I mean, he really, you know, just bullied me and trash talked me and like really just had was all up in my head and um yeah it was difficult it was difficult because again at this point i i'm i'm 20 years old at this point and you know i'm getting angry with him and i want to do something but like i'm also like when is the right point to do something you know what i mean this is a veteran he's been with the company i think at that point for like a decade and like, when is it a point where I need to, like, do something and, you know, would that be frowned upon or would that be respected? And, you know, and when is that point? And, you know, I never obviously did anything. He just, it, it really, what it comes down to it, with a lot of those guys that you're talking about, like you had talked about Bob and JBL. And, you know, if you were a young guy coming up in that time, they would mind fuck you and they would work the deep mind fuck and they would try to get you second guessing yourself and, uh, to lose your confidence and you know a lot of it to them i think was just i don't know if it was necessarily even that they were trying to screw you over it was just you know they, they felt it was their job to test you and make sure that you know you got the right goods or that you got thick enough skin but um you know who knows maybe you know maybe it was because they just wanted to fuck guys over I, I don't know i can't tell you that you know what i mean Bradshaw from WWE. Bradshaw was a wimp. He was the biggest wimp that the rest of the world ever see. There, there was a guy called Joy Style. He worked in the office, beat the crap out of him on an airplane coming back from Europe one day. What a big sissy Bradshaw was. It was all fake. He just a one big fake wimp. He couldn't even whoop his way out of a wet paper bag. He's soft as a grape. Yeah, I think uh, Joey Styles whooped his ass. You know how big Joey Styles is? Small. Yeah, Joey Styles is probably about five foot six, 160 pounds. He beat up Bradshaw. Beat, he beat him halfway to death. The wrestler had to pull him off of him. He's, he's all show. He's all mouthy. He's a, he's a punk. What was... Your what were your thoughts when when you heard of the uh, altercation that he had with uh, John Bradshaw Layfield? Where he, I guess, I guess from the sounds of it, he came out on the uh, winning end. Yes, he did. He knocked him out. From what I, I was not there, but when I heard that, that was one of those stories that spread like it, it, we we heard about it. I would joke and say we heard about it ten minutes after it happened because people couldn't wait. You know, because listen, we all know that 
that uh, that Bradshaw, you know, bullied everybody. So the you know, so everybody had a Bradshaw story. So the fact that he got his come up and people couldn't wait to share the story. And I know it had so much to do with Joey as it did the fact that Bradshaw no longer could uh, could operate in this with the same mystique. I mean, he still tried and he still but but the mystique was gone. Mm-hmm. You know, the idea of, oh, he's the he's the bully. He's the locker room enforcer. No, not so much. Not so much. And I mean, I, I was happy for Joey because it got them off his back. Now, there's been so much talk about the WWE backstage bullying in the early 2000s. You were older at that time when you were in WWE, but did you either experience any of that or witness any of it? I know that you wrestled JBL before, who was known as one of the the big bullies back there at the time. Yeah, you know, I think... So what John said, though, back there is just part of the culture, part of, and that's that, that's true. You know, that's for some people. Uh, some people can handle it. Some people can. Uh, there's there's been a few times that he would joke with me too. Uh, you know, whenever there was a point though that that came about as in England, as a matter of fact, and I was being kind of, I felt that was kind of being pushed a little bit. So I had a, you know, as a man, I had to stand up for myself and. I had a question if there's a real problem with me, because if there is, then if it's something we have to handle and take care of, well, let's just get it done. But apparently it was just nothing more than just, nope, just, just playing around, no big deal, I, I, I like you. This is mostly a wrestling channel. Someone had a question on here regarding the Bradshaw and Moro situation where you, I guess, stuck up for Moro when he was being bullied. Uh, by one of the WWE announcers, JBL. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, just just dumb people who who don't realize over the years that they become an, the douchebag, you know. And uh, for for them doing certain things uh, to people, it's all normal. But they don't think about how certain people are. Like Maro's bipolar, you know. He takes an insult way different than any other person takes. For him, it's like an intensifier by thirty. You know, and it really crushes him. It can crush him. Sometimes he doesn't care, care at all. But you don't know because that's his disease. Sometimes he shoots up and down. And I've seen him in situations. I have, have to talk to him like you're completely crazy. You know, and for a guy who knows that Maro is bipolar and then start talking like that, yeah, you're just a douchebag. You have no clue. Those are the people who would say to uh, somebody if somebody is, uh, has anxiety. They say, well, why don't you just stop having anxiety? Or the depressed, but just be happy. I go, yeah, yeah. It was that easy, you know. You didn't need all these doctors, right? I mean, it's a disease. It's something that they cannot do anything about. You don't believe that they don't want to be uh, afraid or having anxiety. Of course, they don't want to. It's not as simple as saying. I was, um, I was depressed for about three months, and you have to understand, I'm never depressed. With me, everything is always full on. And it was after my fight, my last fight in 2006, a couple of months after that, suddenly, I don't know why, where it came from, but I was considering suicide. I was, I was, I was like, I was literally with my car and then I saw an, uh, a, a crossover and I thought, you know, what if I just pile drive my car into it? You know, it's all going to be over. And I, I was shaking away. I go, dude, what are you thinking? What's going on? And I had these sweaty palms. It was so weird. And then thankfully, I started putting in my mind a list together with all the good things that I have in life and all the bad things. And then you're going to find out that all the good things outweigh by so much all the bad things. And that got me out of it, you know, and suddenly everything was back to normal. But I, I tell you one thing, at that moment, I had no control. So every time when I see a commercial with people, you know, and they talking about depression, do I feel because I, I, I felt for three months, I felt what they have every single day. It's a very hard thing. And it's not like you can say, oh, let's, let's be happy. It doesn't work like that. These are just people, dumb people who don't look into anything unless it happens to a family member or something like that. It's like, for instance, what's his name? Kanye West, right? And, oh, and he comes up and he grabs the microphone out of her hand and, you know, and everybody goes, oh, he's a piece of crap, piece of crap, including me. But then you find out he's also bipolar. You know, he can't control his emotions. You know, actually, so at the, right away he got a pass from me because that's what happens. You know, you have to sit, sit, figure figure things out. If some people do really weird things, you know, there might be a reason behind it. And if you don't know, maybe you should Google about it or find out before you're going to start making comments, which is what we see right now in this day and age. Everybody's making comments and nobody's checking anything. 
Did he ever apologize after you stepped in tomorrow or anything like that? No, I think that he apologized like a half, what, not to me, but to tomorrow, I think, you know, that, uh, yeah, it, it was wrong, but it was, it never comes from the heart, you know, you can like, uh, when I saw Conor McGregor, when he hit that older guy, and then I saw him in an interview afterwards, that was an interview that I said, okay, he's, he feels really bad about what he did. You could tell, you know, but. With that guy, I, I, I couldn't really tell. But they say it, you know, it doesn't match the facial expression. What did you think of Bradshaw anyways? Uh, <laughs> some people say he was a bully, but I highly doubt he ever tried to bully you. No, he was, He would pick on some of the guys, but he knew who was true to the crew and, you know, who was legit. Do you think in wrestling today there almost needs to be some behind-the-scenes people like Bradshaw? Because it seems like... They're a bit sissies these days sometimes. It's dull. It's it's soft. Even Undertaker said it's soft. What's uh, his problem? What was he doing? Fooling around he's like a John he's Bradshaw Layfield. He's in Loud House, Texas, you know, but he, and, you know, you know, and hey, I know, I know you've done the research. You know the man behind the gimmick. You know, you know what kind of philanthropist he is. I mean, the guy, oh. guy, unbelievable. It makes me proud to to, to work with somebody like that. It's, it's so giving of their time. I mean, he has a reputation, but you know, in, in, in that, in that locker room, he played a role just like he did on, on TV. And he got over that role in the locker room too. He was undertakers and forcers. He didn't do nothing that the dead man didn't, didn't approve of. You know, the first thing they said is, so tank, welcome the wrestler's court. And, uh, that was, you know, JBL. And uh, basically, I was asked, so Tank, tell me, if your partner wants to dance with a guy till the early hours of the morning to become better at his, you know, gimmick, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you go and dance with him? Uh, and I just thought to myself, holy shit, Chad, did you just throw me under the bus? Uh, and I thought, well, I'm just going to be honest here. And so I said, you know what? I'll tell you. It's just, it, I said, not, nothing, I said nothing against it, but I said, it just felt gay to me. And I just, it, I just, it felt gay. And they looked at me, shook their heads. And then they were like, you're goddamn right, Chad. Admit, you're a faggot. You know, they dropped the F-bomb on them. And uh, you admit you're gay, you're a faggot. You're, you know, and uh, I was like, holy shit. I was like, oh my God. I was like, here it comes. And uh, I mean, I felt relieved that they weren't coming after me now. But at the same time, I was like, shit, they're going after him. And uh, and he's like, I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I swear. I swear I'm not gay. And and then he started crying. And once he started crying, uh, they're like, you know, throwing the napkins up in the air. There's no crying and wrestling. What are you? What the hell? What's wrong with you? Your mama's boy. Faggot. You know, that kind of stuff. And um, and uh, and he's like, I swear I'm not gay. I'm not gay. And 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 he's crying. And you're like, all right, calm down, calm down. Stop crying. Stop crying. Do some jumping jacks. Do some push ups. So he's crying, doing jumping jacks and push ups and all that stuff. And then and uh, and and Orlando Jordan is like, Chad, if anyone knows gay, I know gay, and you're gay. And uh, so basically, you no, know, he's he's upset about that whole thing, and and he's just trying to defend himself now. And so you know, they're having their fun with it, and they're saying. So and they knew that that we already had some some issues as far as, uh, you know, not good chemistry. And so like Chad, so. Tanks, Tank says he's the captain of the, of the team. And uh, so what's the deal here? If, why are you letting him call the shots? Why, why don't you be a man and call some of the shots? Why don't you tell him that you're going to call the shots? And so they're goating him in to try and say, you know, trying to get him to, to stand up to me and uh, which it wasn't. I didn't ever try to make it like that to begin with, but basically bottom line is uh they get him to to say to me tank i'm a man and from now on i'm gonna call the shots too and i get to have equal say and blah 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 and he's just going oh my god my god and, and so they say basically they're like tank so you guys have had some some issues out there uh and just gotta know why haven't you guys fought and I said, uh, I said, we just haven't fought. I mean, they had heard that, you know, I had pulled over the car on the side of the road and wanted to beat his ass because he had 
talked behind my back to Stephanie about about gimmicks that you know he should have cleared with me first about you know about you know th things, but uh, so I think they got caught wind that how frustrated I was with the situation and um, and so they tried to go him into a fight and they said to me uh, they said why why haven't you ever fought him I said I just haven't and they said why not I said I don't know just have, I just I just haven't I'm trying to work through this you know and they said Chad why haven't you fought him and he's like I just haven't. And he's trying to, you know, say, and then he goes, tell me why. He goes, I'll tell you why. Because my mama taught me to walk away from a fight. And then they just lose their shit. They're like, your mom, your mom, you can't bring your mom into this. You can't bring your mom into wrestling. And uh, you're, you're a mama's boy, little faggot, queer motherfucker. And drop the, I mean, going off on him. It was pretty terrible. Uh, and I, I felt bad for him. But I was like, at this point, I was like, man, you brought this on yourself. I told you not to bring that damn freaking camcorder. And so... They said, Chad, you need to stand up to him right now and hit him. You need to hit him. And so, you know, eventually after minutes and minutes of just beating him down, he's like, stands over top of me. I'm sitting in my seat and I'm, he's like, ah, oh, tank, tank. And he's got his back to the boys, right? And he's like, ah, oh, tank. He's like, he's going to like wind up and hit me. And, and he like literally looks at me and he winks and he goes, and he's like, he's like, go with it like type of thing right and they see him wink and they said whoa whoa did you just wink did you are you trying to plan a fake fight you can't you can't plan a fake fight with against the boy the boy this is what we do he's like you can't plan a fake fight and i was like oh my god this he's just burying himself further and further and further so luckily you know at that point it was getting real late i i was like hey guys would you mind if i go to the bathroom real quick they're like no no problem go ahead i go to the bathroom as I'm going to the bathroom, I'm just finishing up and he busts in the door and he's like, tank, tank, please, you got to help me. Please, you got to help me. Please, please, please. I was like, Chad, what do you want me to do? You, you really, you know, you've done it good this time. And he's like, he's like, just let me hit you one time, please. And I was like, are you out of your damn mind? I said, if I let you hit me, then I become the pussy ass bitch. And I said, I can't, I can't do that. I was like, you got to find a way to dig yourself out, man. And he's like, please. And I was like, no, I was like, I can't. And I was like, look, dude, figure it out, man. And I walk out, I walk out. And as I'm walking out, all those guys are walking in, you know, Undertaker and, and, and Animal and uh, JBL and, uh, and Benoit. And, you know, they're all walking in there. Oh, I, I, was Booker T there? He's there the next one. But anyway, bottom line, they all walk in, they're going to the bathroom and I'm waiting there. Now I'm waiting near right outside the bathroom. There's an elevator and I'm just waiting there, hoping, hoping that they'll say, all right, let's wrap this up and, and call it a night. So I'm waiting there and, you know, Chad's once again, begging me. And this, to this point now, I, and I, I, I shit you not. He's on his hands and knees looking up at me and saying, please let me hit you on time. Please let me hit you on time. And I felt so bad for the guy but at the same time, I was like, this, this guy, I, there's no getting through to him. I was like, I, I, I'm like, you're in for it. So he, he basically um, is begging me. And I'm wondering, like, where are these guys at? Like, why aren't they out of the bathroom yet? And then meanwhile, as you know, as, as, you, as you heard the story, but for those who haven't, they're in the bathroom and Undertaker goes to open the door. And as he goes to open the door, looks back at the guys and said, little bastard locked us in, which from what I understand was they they started dying laughing. He went from being so buried to like just being over as a motherfucker. Right. I mean, he was over. They loved him. They thought that it was, it was great. He, they, he turned the tables. That's all it took for him to do was to, to, to turn the tables was him for him to do that because they thought it was awesome. But the one person that hadn't gotten locked out was Orlando Jordan. And he was going to the bathroom. He saw it was locked. He unlocked it and they came out. And when he came, they came out, they saw Chad up down on his knees begging me. And so he went from being down buried to being over to go even further down than ever before. And uh, that was that. And then uh, they're like, all right, this is, this is pathetic. And so let's call it a night. So we all get on the elevator and Chad's now just like, I mean, like inconsolably crying on the elevator as we're going up and they're just like nudging him in into him and bumping him and 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 I was just like God this is terrible and um 
I did feel bad for the guy, how bad he's being, you know, bullied at that moment. Uh, and then like, they're all getting off, all getting off. And then finally, like Chad, Chad's getting off at his room and I, I go off. Cause I was like, I said, I felt so bad for this guy. I was like, they're, I'm scared he, what he might do to himself. Uh, it just seemed like he was in such a bad place. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go and calm him down and stuff. So went back to his, uh, to his room and, and said, Hey dude, like I tried to have a long talk with him, tried to calm him down and say, you can't let him get to you like that. So that's what happened that night. You know, the first thing they said is, so tank welcome the wrestlers court. And, uh, that was, you know, JBL. And, uh, basically I was asked, so tank, tell me if your partner wants to dance, with a guy till the early hours of the morning to become better at his, you know, gimmick. Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you go and dance with him? Uh, and I just thought to myself, holy shit, Chad, did you just throw me under the bus? Uh, and I thought, well, I'm just going to be honest here. And so I said, you know what? I'll tell you. It's just, it, I said not, nothing. I said nothing against it, but I said it just felt gay to me, and I just, it, I just, it felt gay. And they looked at me, shook their heads, and then they were like, "You're goddamn right, Chad. Admit you're a faggot." You know, they dropped the f bomb on them, and uh, you admit you're gay. You're a faggot. You're, you know, and uh, I was like, "Holy shit!" I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Here it comes." And uh, I mean, I felt relieved that they weren't coming after me now, but at the same time, I was like, "Shit, they're going after him." And, uh, and he's like, I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I swear. I swear. I'm not gay. And, and then he started crying. And once he started crying, uh, they're like, you know, throwing the napkins up in the air. There's no crying and wrestling. What are you, what the hell, what's wrong with you? Your mama's boy faggot, you know, that kind of stuff. And, um, and, uh, and he's like, I swear I'm not gay. I'm not gay. And, and, and he's crying and you're like, all right, calm down, calm down. Stop crying. Stop crying. Do some jumping jacks, do some pushups. So he's crying, doing jumping jacks and pushups and all that stuff. And then, and, uh, and, and Orlando Jordan is like, Chad, if anyone knows gay, I know gay and you're gay. And, uh, so basically, you know, he's, he's upset about that whole thing and, and he's just trying to defend himself now. And so, you know, they're having their fun with it and they're saying so, and they knew that, that we already had some, some issues as far as, uh, you know, not good chemistry. And so sort of like Chad, so tanks, tank says he's the captain of the, of the team and, uh, so what's the deal here? If why are you letting him call the shots? Why why don't you be a man and call some of the shots? Why don't you tell him that you're going to call the shots? And so they're goating him in to try and say, you know, trying to get him to to stand up to me, and uh, which it wasn't. I didn't ever try to make it like that to begin with. But basically, bottom line is, uh, they get him to to say to me, Tank, I'm a man, and from now on, I'm going to call the shots too, and. I get to have equal say and blah, blah, blah. And he's just going, oh my God, oh my God. And, and so they say, basically, they're like, Tank, so you guys have had some some issues out there uh, and just got to know, why haven't you guys fought? And I said, uh, I said, we just haven't fought. I mean, they had heard that, you know, I had pulled over the car on the side of the road and wanted to beat his ass because he had talked behind my back to Stephanie about about gimmicks that you know he should have cleared with me first about you know about you know things but uh so I think they got caught wind that how frustrated I was with the situation and um and so they tried to go him into a fight and they said to me uh, they said why why haven't you ever fought him I said I just haven't and they said why not I said I don't know just have, I just I just haven't I'm trying to work through this you know and they said Chad why haven't you fought him and he's like I just haven't and he's trying to, you know, say, and then he goes, tell me why. He goes, I'll tell you why. Because my mama taught me to walk away from a fight. And then they just lose their shit. They're like, your mom, your mom, you can't bring your mom into this. You can't bring your mom into wrestling. And uh, you're, you're a mama's boy, little faggot, queer motherfucker. And drop the, I mean, going off on him. It was pretty terrible. Uh, and I, I felt bad for him. But I was like, at this point, I was like, man, you brought this on yourself. I told you not to bring that damn freaking camcorder. And so... They said, Chad, you need to stand up to him right now and hit him. You need to hit him. And so, you know, eventually after minutes and minutes of just beating him down, he's like, stands over top of me. I'm sitting in my seat and I'm, he's like, ah, oh, tank, tank. And he's got his back to the boys, right? And he's like, ah, oh, tank. He's like, he's going to like wind up and hit me. And, and he like literally looks at me and he winks and he goes, 
and he's like wink. he's like go with it like type of thing right and they see him wink and they said whoa whoa did you just wink did you are you trying to plan a fake fight you can't you can't plan a fake fight with against the boy the boy this is what we do he's like you can't plan a fake fight and i was like oh my god this he's just burying himself further and further and further so luckily you know at that point, it was getting real late. I, I was like, hey, guys, would you mind if I go to the bathroom real quick? They're like, no, no problem. Go ahead. I go to the bathroom. As I'm going to the bathroom, I'm just finishing up, and he busts in the door, and he's like, Tank, Tank, please, you got to help me. Please, you got to help me. Please, please, please. I was like, Chad, what do you want me to do? You, you really, you know, you've done it good this time. And he's like, he's like, just let me hit you one time, please. And I was like, are you out of your damn mind? I said, if I let you hit me, then I become the pussy ass bitch. And I said, I can't, I can't do that. I was like, you got to find a way to dig yourself out, man. And he's like, please. And I was like, no, I was like, I can't. And I was like, look, dude, figure it out, man. And I walk out, I walk out. And as I'm walking out, all those guys are walking in, you know, Undertaker and, and, and Animal and uh, JBL and, uh, and Benoit. And, you know, they're all walking in there. Oh, I, I, was Booker T there? He's there the next one. But anyway, bottom line, they all walk in, they're going to the bathroom and I'm waiting there. Now I'm waiting near right outside the bathroom. There's an elevator and I'm just waiting there, hoping, hoping that they'll say, all right, let's wrap this up and, and call it a night. So I'm waiting there and, you know, Chad's once again, begging me. And this, to this point now, I, and I, I, I shit you not. He's on his hands and knees looking up at me and saying, please let me hit you one time. Please let me hit you one time. And I felt so bad for the guy but at the same time, I was like, this, this guy, I, there's no getting through to him. I was like, I, I, I'm like, you're in for it. So he, he basically um, is begging me. And I'm wondering, like, where are these guys at? Like, why aren't they out of the bathroom yet? And then meanwhile, as you know, as, as, you, as you heard the story, but for those who haven't, they're in the bathroom and Undertaker goes to open the door. And as he goes to open the door, looks back at the guys and said, little bastard locked us in, which from what I understand was they they started dying laughing. He went from being so buried to like just being over as a motherfucker. Right. I mean, he was over. They loved him. They thought that it was, it was great. He, they, he turned the tables. That's all it took for him to do was to, to, to turn the tables was him for him to do that because they thought it was awesome. But the one person that hadn't gotten locked out was Orlando Jordan. And he was going to the bathroom. He saw it was locked. He unlocked it and they came out. And when he came, they came out, they saw Chad up down on his knees begging me. And so he went from being down buried to being over to go even further down than ever before. And uh, that was that. And then uh, they're like, all right, this is, this is pathetic. And so let's call it a night. So we all get on the elevator and Chad's now just like, I mean, like inconsolably crying on the elevator as we're going up and they're just like nudging him in into him and bumping him and 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 I was just like God this is terrible and um I did feel bad for the guy how bad he's being you know bullied at that moment uh and then like they're all getting off all getting off and then finally like Chad Chad's getting off at his room and I I go off because I was like I said I felt so bad for this guy I like they're I'm scared he, what he might do to himself uh, it just seemed like he was in such a bad place so I was like, all right, I'm going to go and calm him down and stuff. So went back to his, uh, to his room and, and said, Hey dude, like I tried to have a long talk with him, tried to calm him down and say, you can't let him get to you like that. So that's what happened that night. How do you describe GBL? Go watch the movie Dazed and Confused. It's a cult classic. And there's a character played by Ben Affleck named O'Banion, I believe. O'Banion. Basically he's a guy who literally flunked himself out of high school for the sole purpose that he could come back and haze the young kids coming from junior high, beat them with a stick. That's the best description I can give in the video. Um, if I were to describe WWE, it's like a well-oiled machine. A uh, billion dollar company, very successful, but it's almost like the military. You got your head captain, who we always know who it is, and then you got like little sergeants that are put in place to align the troops and soldiers. And the longer you're there, the higher you get ranked. That's the best way I can describe WWE. And um, if you don't fit their mold or you're not part of their you know, game plan or don't um, react to their tests the right way, um, you're booted out. And 
John in the dress room is a little abrasive and to young guys and, and, and guys that are new to the business and haven't been around I can see how he would intimidate them but you know I know him differently and, and I know he, you know he wouldn't hurt if hurt a fly but he's he just has those ways about him you know he he can come off as a bully but you just kind of know him and I heard you say that Jacques didn't like Bradshaw very much. No, because one time uh, we were in Winnipeg, I think, uh, we, we had a analyzed uh, flight, you know, a private flight for uh, just the wrestlers. And there's uh, a van from, let's say, a Holiday Inn van, you know, who comes to pick us up. And Bradshaw just tossed the driver out of the seat and he grabs the wheel. And he does like crazy things in the snow, and the guy's from Texas, you know. <laughs> so, so, so Jacques got, he, he gets nervous because he says, Man, I got kids at home, you know. You're from fucking Texas, you're driving in the fucking snow, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And Brad's just having fun, and ha 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 ha. And uh, he told him, You know, when we get there, if we're in life, man. You're not gonna believe it, and then uh, we had a big argument, and they almost fought, you know. And uh, fucking Bradshaw just shut up. I, I liked uh, I liked Bradshaw. Uh, he he was a bit of a bully to, oh. to some he didn't like. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but uh, I was around. Uh, I was actually there before he was there, so I got to work with him his first matches in the WWF so uh, we we became friends so um, I worked with them gee I, I would honestly say a hundred times no exaggeration uh, up and down the road throughout the years and uh, it was always good to me you know always never had a problem you, Do you know have a story about bullying that he might have done someone that could be a yeah, the other guys, he was just always the tough guy, you know, always uh, trying to prove something. I, nothing that comes to mind, uh, nothing juicy that's, uh, you know, worth wasting my time. But, uh, you know, he always made sure he, uh, you know, he was uh, the tough guy on the block. You know what I mean? I remember, what about the blue meanie? <laughs> I remember the blue meanie that he, uh, that he split him open. Oh. Uh, that I, I thought was really not not professional and uh, not good because uh, the blue meanie uh, his real name is Brian who I love deeply he's a wonderful wonderful guy um, it, you know he, he didn't deserve that uh, from what I understand I think he hit him with a chair or uh, something or punched him something where he split him open very badly uh, and I think it was at the uh, either the first or the second ECW one night stand, um, which was uncalled for. Uh, which uh, you know it, it was very deplorable. But uh, anything with Joey Styles, I, I don't recall. But uh, the, the stuff he did with Blue Meanie, I, I don't know where it came from. Do you think it was intentional? He was. Oh, I, I, I think I, I think it was definitely intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely intentional. In 2006, when he was doing the billionaire thing with the car and the, the Longhorns and the limousines and the hats, I, I thought that was the real JBL. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was entertaining. Um, I, I thought he had a great run, but uh, you know, uh, at that point, I think what you see is what you get. You know. Um, in, sometimes you, you hear, you know, life imitates art and art imitates life. And I think uh, a little bit of both happened to JBL. Because uh, the same guy that I met in 1996 uh, wasn't necessarily the same guy I met uh, in uh, 2007, 2008 when I was there. And I remember JBL kind of took some cheap shots at Harry in a match one time. And I'm pretty sure Harry uh, in a ring with no rules or in a street fight would fucking rape Justin Bradshaw pretty badly even though he was supposed to be so tough I saw him in the brawl for all and he didn't look like he was that badass at all and that's just that's the same thing coming from a 195 pound guy it's like maybe he's maybe he was a tough guy and if he got a hold of you good but I mean if you get punched in the face a couple times by a guy that's even 190 195 and your teeth are getting fucking knocked out of your mouth or you're getting eye gouged or something because it's not 
got some wrestling match where you got a referee and uh, or MMA with gloves on and a breaks in the mouth guard and shit. I'm not bite you. It just says you can bite me or I'll fucking poke you in the eyes. You can poke me in the eyes, but it's a different type of fight. And uh, I think sometimes guys take liberties in wrestling and act like they're tough when uh, some of the toughest guys in the world in wrestling supposedly the brawl for all exposed how tough they really were. And most of those guys got fucked up. Doctor Destiny Williams was fucked up. Uh, Bradshaw got fucked up. So there was some bizarre incident with you in Toronto with JBL. Yeah. Uh, what were, was that just the internet making more of something that wasn't really there? Or no, you know what? They just I think it was WWE's way of just kind of killing me off TV. But it was just kind of like, why did the why did you even have me debut on TV anyway? Like with that, you know, and. Uh, you know, it was just, it was a shitty thing and it wasn't really John's fault, but, uh, had it been, had it been me now and we had done that match, it would have been a shoot and he would have lost that one. So I know your buddies with Moro. What do you think of all that, uh, everything that's been talked about? Supposedly? Well, you know, it's tough to say cause Moro, you know, he, I know Moro pretty well, and he, he does take things really personally. So, and I know that JBL has his reputation of being a bully and stuff like that. So I think it could be a combination of a couple things. And really bottom line is, Moro's got a lot of like mental health issues, and he's been pretty open about that on Twitter and everything. So anybody with mental health issues pretty much shouldn't work in WWE. I mean, it's, a, it's not really the best work environment just because of the stress and and everything and I think that he probably you know he takes things personally probably J JBL was hazing him a bit and he probably just said screw this and snapped and said I'm having enough of this and I'm leaving I mean I have different I don't want to get into it why I think they brought the BWO back there's been different speculations on why they did I mean I have my own reasons but I'll probably a lot of people suspect <laughs> obviously it was a favor because of the Bradshaw eh. Where, that could be. Which, what was your reaction to that, speaking of the one night stand? I couldn't believe it, man. I couldn't believe it happened. I think J J John was drinking. There had been some issues with him and Meanie in the past, and they're standing in the ring. Why were they allowing the talent to drink? Uh, because it was Wild West, man. It was the, I don't know. They were all up on the balcony <laughs> drinking all night long. It was an absolute recipe for disaster. And I just I mean, Meanie's the most harmless guy in the world. I don't know what the backstory fully was, but he was attacked on pay per view and just bludgeoned. You watch as soon as that begins, you just watch. Go watch the pay per view. Go watch it again. I grab Ray Mysterio by the throat and pull Ray into the corner with me, and I looked right at him and said, "Don't move. Just stay, let's just stay right here." And uh, it was just a bad sight. I mean, Meanie got busted open, and bludgeoned, and it sucked. John did a lot of shit that was messed up, I and mean, more of it was just to entertain himself or to keep the sanctity of the business because he broke in totally different. A lot of the guys he broke in with Bobby Duncombe and, and around Stan and all the other guys. He was an old school, hard-nosed guy. I just felt bad all around for that. I just marred. It, it ended the evening on, for me, it ended on a low note. An evening that was supposed to be really cool. Just also on JBL, like, it's known that him and both him and Bob Holly were a little bit bullies, but was it ever told to them by the office do you think if someone was kind of out of line that they had to actually probably you know. to a degree and you have to you, you used to have to have locker room policemen like that yeah, we, you to, when you're in the WWE world in that bubble and you're just mind controlled there you're more of a dark depressed soul <laughs> you just are that's how it was you're always on edge and I actually think the office liked that a little bit yeah. keep the guys on edge keep each other stroke keep that competitive advantage I truly do think that and uh you know, John and, 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 and Bob, I think maybe just to rile themselves up. I don't know what the deal was. Maybe it was so they could entertain Taker. I have no clue. But a lot of it happened. Uh, nobody got killed. It sucked. When you're in it, it was awful. I mean, luckily for the guys today, they're never going to have to experience any of that. Yeah. I still talk to a lot of people up there. When I hear the stories of what it's like now, I'm like, <laughs> you have no clue. But uh, Didn't one guy actually quit the company? Palmer over Cannon. Yeah. yeah. He actually, I remember giving him some heads up before the tour, and we, I'll never forget, I woke up in the middle of the night to a text message. He said, hey, Nova, it's Palmer. I'm on my way back. They got me. And I was like, what? I don't know all the particulars of the story, but I got really hot and heavy. This is after he had, I mean, that kid did, gave up a lot. He, he moved down from Georgia. He was in the developmental system. During his time there, <laughs> right before his full-time tenure on the road, his brother had passed away in a really bad motorcycle wreck. Uh, 
he had a lot of ups and downs Palmer mentally behind the scenes like cracking him and then he was up there and they just pushed him to the edge I know some of what was said and I won't repeat it it was it was too horrendous for words and I just what I do remember is the stories of Rey Mysterio running out to stop him from leaving because Rey was like please don't leave man you're one of us Rey did the right thing Rey ran out there and Rey is just if this is the list of the best guys ever Rey's up here in and out of the ring but uh Oscar, he ran out there to try to stop him from leaving. He was so like heartbroken about it. Ray was so upset, like he didn't want to see it. But at that point, it was, I never—I don't think I've ever spoke to Palmer again after that. I just—I don't even know what he does today. Did you ever have any issues with uh, Bradshaw? You don't seem like a guy that no. you would have picked on, but he was. No, he didn't pick on me. Did no, you? we actually got along really well because he's a former football player too. So we'd always talk football and sports and stuff. And man, I never had any problems with him. Did you notice any of some of the other stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they, you know, he tortured Miz like you would never believe. Threw him out of the locker room, made him dress in the hallway, all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was, he had his moments. <laughs> John was an overbearing son of Mitch. He could be. But it was, it was good natured, but it was stiff. Okay. It was a joke, but it, might have not have been a joke to the people that he was getting on a little bit. JBL, that whole set, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> well, first of all, you worked with JBL initially. 96. Uh, in 96. Yeah. Any issues with him at that time? No, no. Well, he, 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 uh, um, he didn't want to put me over. And I got nothing to do with that, you know, and then went over and then did. And he told me, he said, I'm going to kick out. If you don't pay me, I'm going to kick out. He told me he was going to kick strong, you know, a big, strong boy then. And, well, and he kicked out. If you go back and watch it, he kicked out and, and you wrestled. And I did the meat hook, remember the yeah. chin in the, in the chest, <laughs> and then hook and to, to get it, to, to pin it. He kicked out of the first thing, his roll through slam. Yeah. And he, he kicked out. And then I just best I could, and and because he he was kicking, and, but he told me he was going to, you know. And you know. pretty sure you could out wrestle him in a shoot in those days, anyway. Yeah, but uh, you know, but but uh, guys were getting in his ear too. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Right, you because know? you had he against you, as you said, right? Yeah. And he was yeah working his way up in the pool. Yes, 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 yes. He hadn't. He'd been there longer, of course, than me. He'd been there maybe a year. Right. Already. Yeah. Yeah. You're but after that, I've never had any problem, you know, and we, we worked a few times after that and work, never did, and we're, we're, we're all right, we're cool. So back to that uh, one night stand, could you give us the long version of that night? Um, that with Bradshaw in that, um, there was heat there. We had the uh, hardcore homecoming thing that Shane, uh, uh, Jeremy Borash, Bob Ryder and those guys all put together, a lot of the ECW guys in the arena, Raven and all them, you know, and, and that, and, and uh, Shane booked me on that, and then Dreamer called me a few days later and booked me on the WWF one and said we could do it, yeah. got it okay, and everything, and the WWF guys didn't want us there, uh, the WWF, you know, the brass kind of, you know, all the, you know, uh, just didn't, and they, they it was friction, kind of, and you could feel it. And I thought I was cool with John, and uh, I heard his radio show a few days forward. I put him over. I said, "Good, that was good stuff that he's talking about," you know. And uh, he was real up on everything. And uh, he was, he was, he'd been drinking. And we were out by the ring, and you know we were going to do that battle roll thing, and. We were getting bad vibes and like they were going to shoot on us and we didn't really know and uh, Vince had talked to us and talked like uh, they were going to uh, go with the brand and we were going to have jobs, you know, and I just got back working full time yeah. and had not been working full time since about 02. You know, and uh, and just doing other things around it. You know, I'd bounty hunt repo cars actually. You know, and I was doing some shows. You know, but and I was just glad to be there and have a job. You know, and I was like, all right. You know, and I could tell they didn't. You know, and they didn't like it because the hardcore thing. They thought it was going. You know, and of course the spot. You know, and but but uh, he was going to open ECW back up. He didn't do it till a year later. But but uh, 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 we're out by the ring. And 
they have to do the thing where uh, the rehearsal thing and they come and do and that big remember Matt Morgan yeah great big guy they have him he just they all come up on us trying to kind of almost punk us you know yeah. not really you know but and and, and somebody goes is this gonna be a shoot on I was like I don't know man I said be ready for anything right and uh, big Matt you know I'm like looking at his chest and then I like went I said well I said you'll be a lot of help to your mom you're full grown <laughs> like that and I said you know I said, I said he played football basketball I knew Jimmy liked him and he goes he looks at me and he says he goes hey he goes um he goes do something that I do and I tell you nut shot me and that way my way might get out of there he didn't, you know, he, he didn't have no problem with us. And a lot of them didn't, you know, it kind of started up. Well, John, we're outside of the ring. Chris Chetty's standing beside me. John's talking and some of the agents are over there and some of them big boys, you know, Tom Cole and, and Matt and some of them other boys, you know. A lot of, you know, they had a lot of big guys in. And John said, he was kind of drunk, he said something, this, this, other, that, and do. They get cute, don't hesitate one to, to knock them the fuck out. Yeah. And then, and, and, uh, and uh, like that, and I went, okay, that's cool. I said, there's two way street to that, man. I said, you know, one, you know, I was kind of joking. They weren't joking. Yeah. And uh, so we got out there, and some heat, I guess something happened, Meany, uh, Meany uh, had said some stuff about John being a bully or something like that, you know? And uh, I don't know, I didn't know all this, but all I saw was was in the ring, and it, 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 was, it, it was intense during the night. You didn't really know what was gonna happen, and the crowd was alive, and Brad, John was a champion, I guess, then, and, uh, and had a ton of heat, and he ragging on the ECW thing and all that, and, and uh, you know, you didn't really know what was gonna go down, and, and uh, you, you really didn't. And it was intense when we all went and did, but I just saw him waffle meaning out of the corner of my eye. I thought, what the fuck is going on, you know? He just like, plowed him, I mean, from behind, man. Hit him in the back, and Meany had had staples in his head from the, from like a night or two before that uh, at the hardcore homecoming of a chair shot accident. And Meany, blood just went everywhere. So I just go up to him, and go, what the fuck, John, what's going on? You know, like, I, I, and he goes, fuck you, man. Bam, kind of rabbit punched me, right? And and, I, and when he came, I'm like, ah, God, I'm like, bam, I come up, not, not like, a, regular like up like you know what I mean I was under him and, and caught him in the eye and got his eye a little you know a little bit and then that and he goes oh fuck Floyd like that you know he always called me Floyd and, and I, so I like went on from him and you know after that it when I broke off from him he goes come back I said I'll be back fuck you man you know I can't you know kind of you know you know how it is you know yeah. and that and, and and I look over and, and Regal Steve was I had, I had was doing something I go it was balls and Axel and, and I go up and I go, hey Steve, come with me, we're safe. He goes, oh, hold on, mate, they got a spot. And he turns around, takes the cane, goes out of the top with uh, that's his spot. So I go back and I see Balls and Axel wailing with John. And Sandman come up behind, like looked and, and come up behind him and got him from behind. And when he did, I got shots on him, right, body shots right there, right? Pretty, you know, put him in there, it's pretty good, you know. And it was, everybody was kind of, you know, and then, and, and, uh, Happened in the ring, left in the ring, all that did. He popped me back, you know, and everything. And they got him out of the ring, whatever happened. Go backstage, and uh, John was legit pissed off. But Beanie, I remember going, he shot on me, man. You see that? What the fuck? He goes, thanks for helping me. You know, he goes, God. I said, yeah, you know, you know what's going on? I go, what the fuck's going on, man? You know, I can't. He goes, I don't know. I don't know. He goes, hey, I think he's mad at something I said about him on a shoot interview or something. Something like that. So we come back, and uh, uh, John was pissed off. The agents were talking. Uh, Johnny Ace was screaming, we don't do that here. We don't do that here. And we got in the dressing room, and Johnny come back up and go, Meany, what the fuck's going on? What brought all that on and all that? I kept my mouth shut because they'd said we were going to, you know, he was going to open up ECW, and we were going to have full-time jobs. I was like, great. You know, heck yeah, man, I'm down. And um, I didn't say nothing about it because, uh, um, you know, you didn't want to get hit with the office. And, you know, this, I didn't want to be unprofessional. You don't want nothing. You said the harassment kind of began when you were a single star. Uh, would that have been Bradshaw being the main uh, perpetrator? Yeah, that's just the way the guy is. He's obviously still there. They obviously like him. You know, everybody has a unique way, a unique personality. And maybe that was just his way of breaking in and testing you. You know what I mean? Um, 
What I, type of stuff was he doing that was getting under your uh, skin? Just name calling. and it, At first it was like, okay, it blew it off, but then it just became more and more and more to the point where it was, it was very hurtful after a while, you know, but you never try to show it. You know, but uh, like I said, that was the past. And Were you around when uh, Joey Styles knocked Bradshaw out? No, but I heard about it. <laughs> and I guess you probably weren't feeling too uh, sorry for him. Well, pushed a butt. Where's Joey now and where's Bradshaw? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bradshaw still got the position. Yeah. What was the reason um, why JBL kind of attacked you in that Raw Battle Royal for the one night only? Oh, the uh, ECW one night stand? Did, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, ta I've talked about how certain things were fortunate situation it sucks for everybody involved but you know uh, my first go around in WWE from 98 to 2000 you know uh, for whatever reason just JBL didn't like me you know when he was, when he was Bradshaw with the accolades and I I have all these theories in the world of why maybe he didn't like me or whatever you know there's there was an incident where my first weekend in, into WWE, uh, I debuted in, in uh, Philly, and then we were going to do a shot in Baltimore, and then back when they did one live Raw and taped another Raw, so I did Sunday Night Heat, and then I did the live Raw, and then we were going to go up to, I believe, either New Haven or Hartford, Connecticut for the taped Raw that would air the next week. So I was, you know, being an indie wrestler and this travel for ECW, I was just going to wrestle Philly, wrestle Baltimore, and then just drive straight up to Connecticut from Baltimore. It's a couple of hours, right? You know, Earl Hubner goes, no, stupid, we fly you now. <laughs> so, uh, okay, cool. I turned in my rental car and uh, he gave me my flight information. I go to the airport, I check in, I look at my ticket. Huh. Seat 1A. It's, it's up front, right? That's close to the front of the plane, right? Huh? And I get to the airplane. I get on the airplane. I realize, holy shit, they gave me a first class seat, which I wasn't expecting. But the booking had been so last second. I mean, they booked my ticket either the day before or day of to fly from Baltimore to, the, to Connecticut. I didn't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> and the moment I knew I was in trouble, I sit my, I <laughs> picture this, first class, first row of seating, uh, blue meanie, big boss man, across the aisle, Shawn Michaels, all right? One of these things is not like the other, <laughs> you know? So I'm sitting there and guys are coming on the plane and they're like looking at me. I'm like, oh, you know, they're like, you know, looking at me like sh shocked that I'm sending him in first class. But I, the moment I knew I was in trouble, McFoley goes, Oh, meanie, no. <laughs> what, Mick, what? Oh, no, meanie, oh. And I was like, he's like, you know, this look of concern. I was like, take me with you, Mick. Take me with you. Put me in your bag. Let me hide, you know. So the flight's going on and, you know, I'm just feeling it. You know, he, my face is red. My tongue is getting fat like my yeah I'm just like oh no I just want if like if there was a window next to me I would just want to open it and done the nasty plunge out like ah see you later and from the back you hear you hear a voice boom out why the fuck is the blue mini in first class and I just wanted to shrink and die I was like oh my god so I get off the plane go to the baggage claim everybody's giving me the eye everybody's like Mark Henry, Mark Henry goes, you fucked up, man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. And then somebody you know, finally went, hey, man, if that happens again, next time get up and offer your seat to a vet. Shit, why, why couldn't somebody tell me that before I went and sat in first class? Because uh, I had never really flown ECW. I'm driving everywhere, you know. You would drive from New Jersey. You would drive from New Jersey to New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm not used to flying, so I get on my first booked wrestling flight, and it happens to be in first class. So I don't know if that rubs a few people the wrong way.
because when we got to the TV, uh, we got to TV, and uh, I, 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 I'm pleading my case in the car. It's me, Al Snow, Mick Foley, and Bob Polly. I was like, dude, did I, did I, how bad is it? Did I really fuck up? Is somebody going to shit my bag? Please don't let anybody shit my bag. And Bob Holly's like, I don't think people shit in bags anymore. I was like, oh, thank, well, thank God for that. I was like, I, I truly didn't know, you know, I'm pleading my case, you know. And then we get the TV, and then uh, I get summoned to a room, and it's uh, Jerry Briscoe and Jack Lanza. They go, look, we we'll understand you're new. This was a mistake. It won't happen again. I was like, absolutely. And Bob Holly was with me, and Bob Holly is awesome. He stood up. He said, you know what? He didn't know there was a mistake. And he, he was just saying to the car how sorry he was and stuff like that. And uh, But I don't know if... That lingered on into the reason why maybe me John didn't like me or John had beef with me or whatever. Yeah, that's why I, you know, I kind of hate talking about the story again because I don't want to bring up old, open up old wounds because eventually when he, the, the one night stand thing happened. Uh, Unfortunately, it's just what you remembered for best. Yeah. I think it's just because it's a rare thing in that time frame for that to happen yeah. on such a, an event with the, a lot of viewers. So you, 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 that hasn't happened since, to my knowledge, in the WWE. Right. And, and the, the weird thing is it, it happened, right? And uh, uh, the, 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 like the, it's Your guard just, was down, right? You yeah. didn't have any... I had no idea it was coming, uh, except for the fact that I saw him staring at... Like, uh, we're doing a stare-off, and... Uh, we had practiced this too. WWE guys, ECW guys here. Hey, you, I'll kick your butt, all this stuff. And uh, I think I yelled at JBL, ah, I'll knock that cowboy hat off or whatever. Something uh, something goofy. You know, we had something we had practiced. And uh, I look over and he's kind of like looking at me. I'm like, oh, 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 sure. But before the whole fracas broke out, like the battle, you know, these seven guys, there, there was a guy, uh, one of the Basham brothers, bald head kid. I was like, hey man, we're never gonna probably have this chance again. Let's get pair off. You know, go back and forth, you know, punch, 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 punch. So I, I, I'm, you know, the fracas breaks out. I'm looking for uh, one of the Basham brothers. And two nights early before, Jeremy Borash had had his version of an ECW reunion with uh, the Hardcore Homecoming at the ECW Arena. And I got split open that night, hard way, back in my head, by Sandman. I, it was either a ladder or a chair. So so much time has gone by, I, I forget which, I'd have to watch it. So I go to the hospital, I get like eight staples right there. One night stand, the fracas breaks out, and John finds me, and I, while I'm paired off with somebody else, he punches me right where I got my staples two nights before. I don't know if he knew or whatever. But just by happen there, by shit luck, hit me around there, and you watch me go, holy shit! Turn around, and uh, you put my shirt over my face and start throwing live rounds. So I was like, fuck, you know, like a hockey fight. Well, I ain't gonna take that. So I try to snatch a headlock, and you know, if you're gonna fight somebody, try to bring them as close so their punches don't have as much range. So I bring them in. And I'm trying to throw live rounds. So somehow we got separated, and um, I get so much blood in my eyes. People don't realize when you get blood in your eyes, everything starts looking like a kaleidoscope, like a like it's like a weird kaleidoscope effect. I'm trying to clear my eyes out, and you know guys are coming up to me like fucking Benoit walks up and goes. Some people thought I bleed. I was like, I know, no, him. And he went off with somebody. Trace Smothers, good. Trace Smothers came on and I was like, fucking JBL. I'm telling you, everybody's coming up to him. I'm like, hey, he just shot on me. And if you watch the tape, Sandman goes over with the Singapore cane, grabs him, and Tracy Smothers went, you know, goes up to him and you know gives him a couple live rounds, and Bubba pulls him out. So we get back to the the gorilla position, which is right behind the curtain. Vince is there and a bunch of people. Johnny Ace comes up to me and goes, Who said you could blade? I went I was like I, I was like, he shot on me. And I get right there I gave him the uh, the cliff notes of he's never liked me, blah blah blah. Since my first time, blah blah blah, he never liked me. And uh, you know, uh 
he's like, well, he apologized. Sorry, this unacceptable stuff like that. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates.